Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another book review. Today I'm going to try and puzzle out what I liked so much about the Goldfinch. So this one I read over the course of about two months. Um, I basically spent most of the summer reading it. Uh, I started off reading anywhere from 10 to 15 pages at a time. Uh, as soon as I opened up the book and started reading, I knew it was going to something going to be something that I would was going to need to read slowly. And the whole reason I picked it up to begin with was because the movie is coming out and it has some of my favorite actors in it. So I picked up the book, started reading, was going very very slowly through it, and then at some point everything changed. I went from 10 to 15 pages a day to 30 to 50 pages a day, and then finally the last hundred pages in probably about 12 hours I was so I, I I'd fallen in love with the book but I think the ending of the book is the strongest part for me because everything it's not it's not that I don't want to say that everything is wrapped up but it, it, it's not a one of those experiences where you have the the full the full circle kind of thing but it does bring everything from me to an immensely satisfying conclusion. Now, I don't know how much of a spoiler this is, but this book is not really about the goldfinch. Um, this book is about the main character, Theo Decker. He loses his mother at the very beginning of the book. He loses his mother in a, a terrorist attack. And... Uh, it somebody bombs the uh, I think it's a museum that they bomb I can't remember which museum it is it doesn't really matter um, but they bomb the museum and he ends up in possession of a painting I knew all that going in and I was wondering how in the world is it is it just this kid on the run from people trying to keep this picture away from them or what what is it I don't know what what was his purpose for stealing the painting all these questions I had going into it and none of the questions really piqued my interest none of the questions that I had about the book and it wasn't until I saw the trailer for the movie that I was like I need to go ahead and read this um, I believe it comes out what September I can't remember um, but I, I'm super hyped for it now especially since I've seen the trailers and the trailers were like pitch perfect not only are the scenes in there from the actual book every single scene I recognize so that gives me hope for it but also just the tone and the cinematography and even the color correction just everything about the trailer speaks to me as a, a lover of the book um, but none of that stuff that none of those questions that I was asking myself about this book interest me but when I finally got into it when I finally came across a certain character that's when everything changed and I realized that th this story at its heart is a story is a coming of age story um, it isn't until Boris shows up and that's about the closest thing to a spoiler I'm gonna get at this point everything else I've talked about is uh, mentioned in the description of the book and I don't consider those things spoilers um, besides if you're looking for a spoiler free review I, I, I honestly don't suggest you watch any videos if you're worried about spoilers for this book, there's some really great stuff that happens. I wouldn't say that they are twists and turns, but there are some really great scenes in this book that I wouldn't suggest you let anybody spoil, spoil for you. So definitely, just click away and just go read the book. Now, when Boris arrives, I automatically fell in love with Boris. If you following my progress on Goodreads, or if you want to go read my, my one-sentence review... Uh, for this book because I haven't yet wrapped my head around everything that I love and that's what I like to do with my written reviews is I like to go in depth and dissect my experience so that's going to take me a while to do but the YouTube channel is more of a conversational piece you know we're going to sit here and we're going to talk about the book um, I'm also not going to be doing a spoiler section at the end of this uh, review so if you're waiting around for that it's it's not coming I don't want to I don't want to talk about any of the major details in this video I might do a spoiler discussion video like I do with my Stephen King books because I love this so much I want them to be two separate entities I want them I want you guys to be able to know my thoughts on the book without spoilers and then a full-fledged spoiler review where we just sit and we just dissect the whole book that'd be a lot of fun um, now I'm not even gonna ask if you guys want it because I will probably just end up doing it anyways uh, so once Boris comes on to the stage 
the the entire tone of the book changed for me. Now, I don't think the tone of the book changed. It is very it's not dryly written. Um, it is one I feel one of the more accessibly accessible Pulitzer Prize winning novels that I have read. Um, I haven't read many. Mostly I lean toward the uh, Man Booker Prize. Those those cats, I, I read those books. I don't review them because I don't feel qualified to review them. It would literally be a review that just said, I like it, I don't like it. Because a lot of those books have really deep threads in them that I either don't fully understand um, and I don't like feeling stupid. Nobody likes feeling stupid. Um, so th those reviews would be boring, I feel. Uh, with this one, I, I didn't feel that there was too much subtext, and if there was a lot of subtext, I caught it. Like, um, maybe where the themes and the, the elements, where the, how the painting is like the boy, that, that kind of thing, that's, uh, that's one thing that I looked at and I appreciated. But at the end of the day, all of that stuff aside, it is a really emotionally poignant and rewarding experience from the first page all the way to the last page. Mind you, there are segments where the, the my favorite characters weren't on screen that I did find myself less adamant about moving forward. I always wanted to pick it up to find out whether or not those characters were coming back, but there are points when you, you tend to worry um, that this person has gone away forever but that's one of the best parts of the book for me, was either racing to get to the point where that I knew that character would return, or slowing down and having that moment with the character of absence, and enjoy, not enjoying, but feeling that absence, feeling the same emotions that that character was feeling. I really enjoyed that. Um, I, I, if nothing else, Donna Tartt really gets you into the mind of the main character. It's also written in first person, so you're in the head of Theo Decker. Um, it's not one of those confusing experiences where um, the narrator is supposing what other people are doing out in the world. While it is hyper-focused on this character. It is a very close first person experience. And then we're going to get to the point that I actually had a problem with the book, but it's not really a problem. Um, the, the problem with the book is I was, without a shadow of a doubt, I'm not using this, this word ironically at all, I was triggered. Um, there's dealings with drug addiction and m mostly it's not really the addiction or the using of the drugs, even though she, she nailed that aspect of it, but there is a section of withdrawal and recovery and that, that whole scene, I had to put down the book for about a week. Um, I didn't even look at it. I put it away. I didn't want to think about it because my skin was actually crawling. If you come across this review and you don't know me, uh, I was a heroin addict from 1997 to 2001. Uh, my wife saved my life. Basically, I met her and she gave me a reason to live. And then we had two beautiful kids over the years. Um, they are now seven years old and 14 years old and every single time, it's like every seven years, you know, I kind of renewed reasoning for being here because we were together seven years before uh, the first one came and then the second one came and another seven years later. It's, it's odd, it's that, that seven, seven year thing, seven year itch, whatever. Uh, but she came along and I, I fell in love with her. She gave me a reason to be, uh, a reason to exist. Uh, beyond the drugs. And it wasn't a matter of her giving me an ultimatum. It was a matter of me saying, I love her so much, I want to be around to experience her. I want to be around to live life with her, so I got to get off the junk. Because before that, I was just bound, set, and determined to murder myself with my drug. You know, at least I'd be going out happy kind of deal, you know. There's a lot of discussion in this book about the, the black abyss during recovery. Um, many people don't don't deal with the depression and the utter the, the nihilism that comes with recovery. Uh, during, it's a, probably about for the first week, anywhere up to a month while you're detoxing, you enter this this stage where you lose all faith in everything. It's like nothing means anything. It's the deepest, blackest depression you can possibly think. And on top of all that, on top of that deep, dark, black pit of depression, you have the physical 
problems with it also. You're sweating, your skin's crawling, you're burning up, you're shaking, you're shivering, your teeth are chattering, you know, if, you, if you got them left in your head by that point in time. Um, it, all these terrible things are going on to you, but you put yourself there. And that's one thing that, that Donna Tartt got right with this book, and something that I was missing from The Little Friend. Um, if you don't know, I read The Little Friend and I absolutely hated it. Um, I almost gave it one star, but it is terrifically written. Um, so I gave it two stars on Goodreads, but then I ended up deleting my review because I think I was a little harsh um, because I was also going through some crap during that point in my life and I want to reread it uh, before I give a final judgment again. Um, but with this one, I never once doubted the author. I never once thought, okay, we might not get any kind of uh, emotional reward here. Uh, it might just be a very, very dark experience to the point where, you know, you want to stick a gun in your mouth at the end of the book kind of deal. Um, I did, it wasn't that. I was very surprised with how the book ended, not because there's a twist ending, but because I didn't expect it. And I didn't expect any point of this book to happen. I honestly thought that this was going to be one of those things where he he gets the uh, he, he gets the painting and it fast forwards to his adult life. I, I don't know why I thought that, but you, the best part about this book is him existing at right directly after the uh, the bomb um, and losing his mother. Again, that's in the description. So um, that that's that's one of the best parts of the book as far as the storyline is concerned because it kept me just interested enough before I got to Boris. So I wasn't bored, but I was wondering where in the world is this going? Because we haven't jumped ahead to this thing. And then all of a sudden I hit that point. I was like, this is a coming of age novel. And it is probably the best coming of age novel I've ever read. And the reason for that is wholly biased. Uh, the reason for that is because much of the stuff, the, the troubles and everything that Theo gets into mirrored my life as a kid. I had one really close friend and we got into all different kinds of shit um, and yes even some of the uh, the, the sexual stuff all, all that all all the stuff that that came about in Theo's life all that stuff is stuff has happened to me at some point. Um, if you read the book you, you can figure that stuff out for yourself but it it was such a beautiful experience to relive my life vicariously, is that right? Is that the word? Vicariously? Anyways, through, through Theo. Um, relive that, that, the, the happy, the happier times. And unfortunately, much of the happiness when I was younger dealt with alcohol. Um, and then my later teenage years were, uh, was heroin. Uh, I never did anything else. In fact, I didn't even try weed until, uh, just recently, about five years ago. But, all these things that Boris and Theo get into, and all the all the, the all the drama they get into, there seems like that in my life, and it was it was a beautiful experience for me, and I would love if more of my friends were to read this. Um, you may not have the same experience that I do, um, but it's this is one of those stories that if you want a little peek into my life. Uh, you'd be able to read at least the first half of this book and see where I'm coming from as a human being. I, I think that's interesting. Now, this book will end up on my top 20. I have no idea where it's going to go because some of the things that I have mentioned, loving so much, the coming of age aspect, the writing, all that stuff, I have other books that might beat it out in those categories. Um, if you, if you want to watch my series of, uh, my top 20 books of all time, I will leave links to all those down there in the doobly-doo. Uh, but the, uh, the final, the final word, the final thing I want to discuss here is I've never experienced a book so deeply. Um, I, I've, I've cried, I've, I've laughed, I've journeyed. Uh, I've read Stephen King's It going on, going on now. I'm on my, I just restarted the book again on my 18th time. Yes, I read two to four pages a night, sometimes as many as 30. It all depends on which chapter I am. I always blow through Stanley's chapter, if you know, if you know, know what I'm talking about. But, uh, I honestly question whether or not this book is better than It in my head. Um, and it's the first time ever that, the top spot, my number one spot for best book of all time has been questioned 
since it has been truly questioned. This one time, uh, the, when I, after I read Nosferatu the first time, I put it above it, and I saw the error of my ways probably a week later. I was like, no, 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 definitely not. Because I started rereading it all over again, and I'm like, yeah, no, Nosferatu isn't even close. It deserves to be in the top three, but it's not even close. Um, but I do feel that th this book might be better than it. And that is a bold statement coming from me. So, while this is more of a review of my life than it is a review of the book, th these are my opinions, this is how I feel about the book, and that's all anybody's, you know, subjective review can be. So, if you've read Gold The Goldfinch, I would love to hear your thoughts about it down below, whether they be good or bad, but please, don't just say, the book sucked, because then I'm, I'm just going to ignore the comment. I want to talk to you about what you didn't like and why you didn't like it, but I'm pretty sure most of the people who say they didn't like it are going to be saying the book is wordy. Yeah, the book is wordy. It's a book. That's what books do. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another book review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!